<sighs> my EV's battery died. Um, well, thankfully not the 400 volt high voltage battery. Um, the 12 volt battery died. So all EVs actually require two batteries to work. One of which is something like this, a 12 volt battery. Today I'm going to tell you why EVs need a 12 volt battery and uh, I will release a second video, which is an instructional video to tell you how to change your 12 volt battery on the Kona Electric. A few months ago, the 12 volt battery in my Kona, well, kicked the bucket. So none of the auxiliary systems are on. That means the door cannot be unlocked electronically, the windows won't roll down, the lights are not on, and most importantly, the vehicle cannot be turned on. Now, luckily, we had access to other vehicles and jumper cables. So we were able to jumpstart the Kona very quickly, very simply. By this point, the OEM 12 volt battery is already four years old, and it's about time to change it out. And that's what I did. And this got me thinking, I should really make a video to tell you guys about why EVs need 12 volt batteries, why 12 volt batteries die, and if you are in a situation where your EV's battery die, what to do about it. Broadly speaking, an EV needs to deliver power to two places. The first is the propulsion, or the drivetrain of the vehicle. The second, to power the rest of the vehicle's electronics. These include all the lights, sound system, infotainment system, door lock, windows, and safety systems. Fulfilling these two roles, EVs have two batteries. A high voltage traction battery, which can range from 400 volts to 800 volts and a second low voltage battery, usually a 12 volt battery. The drivetrain is powered by the high voltage battery, which is capable of delivering tens if not hundreds of thousands of watts to the electric motors in an instant. Now, would you want to have 400 to 800 volts connected to your car's USB port? Probably not. Imagine the type of tingle you would get if you get shocked by 400 volts. That's not a pretty picture, and that's not a good or safe design. So that is why the rest of the electronics are powered by a much lower voltage battery, the 12 volt battery. The basic reason why EVs need two batteries and why it needs a 12 volt battery is safety. Traditionally and modern day, all vehicles, whether it is internal combustion engine, EVs, or hybrids, all have electronic systems that run off of 12 volts. So there is actually no need to reinvent the wheel and somehow make them run off of a 400 volt system. The safest way to design a vehicle is to make all the electronics that you can touch run on 12 volts. This greatly improves safety and it's much better than running them on 400 volts. So essentially, the 12 volt battery exists to govern the 400 volt battery. And here's how it works. When your EV is turned off, the high voltage battery is completely disconnected. All the onboard electronics are powered by the 12 volt battery. And if you leave your EV off for a long time, the 12 volt battery does get topped up from the traction battery from time to time. The moment when you turn on your EV, the 12 volt battery closes the relay, which allows the 400 volt battery to be connected to the rest of the vehicle circuitry. At the same time, the DC to DC converter, which is a device that steps down 400 volts to 14 volts, will send power from the traction battery to the vehicle's other systems, as well as charging the 12 volt battery. Essentially, the vehicle relies on the 12 volt battery to power the vehicle when it is off and requires the 12 volt battery to turn the vehicle on. Once the vehicle is turned on, the vehicle's 12 volt system is powered by the traction battery through the DC to DC converter. When you turn off your car, the 12 volt battery opens the relay to the high voltage battery and disconnects it from the rest of the vehicle. This makes everything safer, because if you are working on your car when it's turned off, you really don't want to touch anything that has 400 volts running through it. 
during car accidents. The 12 volt system is supposed to disconnect the relay as well, so that the high voltage battery is disconnected from the rest of the vehicle. This makes it safer for both the occupants and the rescuers. What can you do to extend the life of your 12 volt battery and to reduce the risk of 12 volt battery issues? Well, sometimes a car's 12 volt battery becomes drained simply because the driver has left something on. Whether it's an overhead light or someone didn't close the tailgate properly, then when you come back to your car, your battery's drained and you can't turn your car anymore. For a lead acid battery, the best practice is always to keep it as fully charged as possible. Undercharging a lead acid 12 volt battery and leaving it there risk sulfation or acid stratification. If sulfation becomes irreversible, it will reduce the amount of energy your battery can hold. And if it continues, then the battery will die. EVs are actually designed to top off the 12 volt battery once in a while, even if the vehicle is turned off. But sometimes it's simply not enough. Now let's talk about this using the Kona Electric as an example. I have not measured any of these things personally, but I have read quite a bit of information on the forums, and this is what I've gathered. For the Kona Electric, if you turn the car off, to start off, every four hours, the 12 volt battery will be topped up by the traction battery. So that seems quite frequent for 20 minutes of charging every four hours. But if you leave your vehicle unused for 56 hours and beyond, then the charging frequency becomes 20 minutes of charging every 24 hours. That seems like it may not be enough. What it means is if you leave your EV unused for weeks or months on end, you may find that the 12 volt battery has been drained. Activities like charging your EV, especially if you're charging your EV on AC for hours on end, or driving your vehicle for long enough and frequent enough, or even just leaving your vehicle on for some time, will help top up your 12 volt battery. Now, if you do have to leave your vehicle unused for a long time, it may be advisable to connect your vehicle's 12 volt battery to a battery tender or a 12 volt battery charger. This way, this device can keep your 12 volt battery topped up even when the vehicle is turned off. Extreme heat or extreme cold can also degrade your 12 volt battery. And if you happen to live in a place where you experience these types of temperatures, you gotta be really careful with your 12 volt batteries. Since for most people, it isn't practical to uninstall your battery and take it home with you every time there's extreme temperature, it helps to be a little more proactive. You can diagnose your 12 volt battery at least once a year just to see what the voltage is like and diagnose the health of the battery. That will tell you if it's time to actually replace it. I will put a link in the description for a very descriptive process of how to diagnose your 12 volt battery. Even though modern EV's traction batteries are using battery technology that is the latest and the greatest, most of these 12 volt batteries are still lead acid batteries. And lead acid technology is very old. Thankfully, there are 12 volt batteries of other composition that you can choose from. There's AGM and there's also lithium ion 12 volt batteries. Both of these types of compositions have characteristics that are better than 12 volt batteries and they can outlast lead acid 12 volt batteries. Now, if you are in a situation where you are about to replace your old lead acid battery, maybe look into these other compositions. Now, these newer compositions are more expensive, but see if they're more suited for your need than an old lead acid battery. Despite your best efforts, let's say the 12 volt battery still dies and now you can't turn on your car anymore. What do you do? I just want to clarify the situation a bit. Um, the situation where you can't turn on your car because your 12 volt battery died only applies in a situation where the car is parked and turned off. If your vehicle is already on, then the traction battery is connected, which means the car's electronics are powered through the DC to DC converter, and the DC to DC converter also charges your 12 volt battery. So really, this only applies when you have your car parked, turned off, and now you can turn it on again. Okay, let's say this happens to you, what do you do? Now there's a simple solution, like all other types of vehicles, you can jump start the vehicle. As long as you have another vehicle that is working, 
and you have jumper cables. You can connect the jumper cables just the standard manner and you are probably able to turn on your car. Now, just remember, a lot of EVs hide their 12 volt batteries, which means you cannot get to the 12 volt batteries terminals themselves. There are often locations uh, where they have extensions of these terminals, and you just need to know where to find these terminals before you jumpstart the car. If you happen to be completely alone and you have no access to a second vehicle, a jump start device can be quite helpful. These devices are essentially batteries themselves. You just hook them up to your dead 12 volt battery and you should be able to start your vehicle. It's not a bad idea to have something like this in your glove box. If you are happen to be close to an outlet or you have a long enough extension cord to an outlet, you can use a 12 volt battery tender or 12 volt battery charger. These basically take electricity from your household outlet and charges up the 12 volt battery for you. As long as the 12 volt battery can receive enough charge, then you can most likely start your vehicle. If none of these options are available to you, then unfortunately you gotta call for help. Most roadside assistants should be more than capable of helping you in a situation where a 12 volt battery is dead. Because lead acid battery is such an old technology, is there something the car manufacturers are doing to address this issue? Well, yes, Tesla is a good example. Tesla in their older EVs used to use lead acid batteries or AGM batteries as their 12 volt batteries, but now they're using newer chemistry. For their newest Model S and Model X, they are using 14 volt lithium ion batteries. And for their newest Model 3 and Model Ys, they are using 16 volt LFP batteries. These batteries have many, many advantages over lead acid. First of all, they have much higher energy density, which means they can be made much smaller and much lighter. Also, these batteries compared to lead acid battery do not have the degradation problem when they are not fully charged. So all of these combined together, they are going to function better and last longer. Now, the only disadvantage I can think of is these type of low voltage batteries are completely proprietary. So it's not like you can drive down to your nearest Canadian tire and get one for yourself. And speaking of Tesla's low voltage batteries, um, there is something else I want to mention. And that is if you have a Tesla vehicle that has the 16 volt uh, battery, it may not be compatible with 12 volt inverters. So again, this is something that probably won't affect the vast majority of people, but I know there are people out there who want to use inverters with their EVs. So a 12 volt inverter, which is the one of the most common type of inverter you can find, most likely is not compatible with 16 volt batteries. So what that means is if you want to use an inverter, you very likely have to buy a specific 16 volt inverter in order for it to work with your Tesla vehicle. Again, not something that the vast majority of people care about, but I know some people do care about it. I certainly hope that this video was informative and that this information may come in handy someday. Whether you are a prospective EV owner or a new EV owner or even an EV veteran, it's very important to know what to expect from your 12 volt battery and to know what to do when the unexpected happens. I certainly hope you will subscribe to our channel for more electric vehicle content. My name is Solomon and we will see you on the next one.